Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Loki and I'm sick and I'm here with Zenrot who is recovering from his sickness already. Yeah, I'm only a little sick so I cough sometimes but otherwise I'm good. Yeah, and we're here to in sickness and in health get married. No, let's talk about Gintama. <laughs> to talk about... <laughs> Even better. Yes, better than marriage. You could say that directly to your lady there, Zed. <laughs> say it to her face. <laughs> Gintama. Thank God she's better. asleep right now. <laughs> Thank God. And she doesn't watch the show, so we're perfectly fine. We're here to talk about episodes 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. This is the end of season one, year one. And episode 50 through 99 uh, is the start of season one, year two which was finally uh, explained to me by someone saying, I explained this to you in the first episode when you guys asked. And I was like, did we really ask that? And I looked back and was like, oh, we did. It has to do with specific production things. So that's the reason why it's the, the episode things are so a little out of orders and out of whack. So thank you very much for answering that question and look forward to answering that question again when we forget five episodes down the line and we ask, why is it like this again? <laughs> Uh, good times. Anyway, let's start off with uh, episode 46, titled Adults Only. We wouldn't want anyone immature in here. Zen, go ahead and tell us what it's about. Uh, also, the exact, uh, the exact translation is, we wouldn't want anyone immature in here. Adults yeah. only, we wouldn't want... Okay, yeah, okay. We're all good. So, it is, uh... They're at the little... The little restaurant um, that it's not a restaurant. What is the place hostess Tay works bar? at? It's like a bar. It's like a hostess yeah. bar. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, and she has a rivalry with uh, Ane, whom I believe is one of the women from the Turn Sadaharu back to normal episodes. Mm -hmm. She's um, one of the pre the one that's not one of the sisters. Yeah. The one that was accused of being easy, I think, is what, yeah. how I remember that. <laughs> um, and she sees Ote beating up one of her customers because the customer touched her butt. Uh, and they get into a fight. And the owner decides, even though they're both extremely popular, um, one of them has to be fired so that the business doesn't get tanked by their rivalry. And so they have like this dramatic uh, showdown where Gintoki and Hasegawa come because Ote asks them to and tries to swindle them out of money. Um, and then uh, Matsu, Matsu, the, old, the old man police chief Matsudaria. shows up for Ane. Matsudaira, yeah. Shows up for Ane and uh, starts buying alcohol like crazy. Um, yeah. And they think that they, like, Ote starts thinking that maybe she should give up, and then Kondo arrives and saves her by buying a shitload of alcohol. Um, <laughs> and then uh, they all run out of money, and so Ote suggests that they go sell everything that they own to get enough money, uh, while Ane decides to, uh, like, blackmail Matsudaira, saying that she'll tell his wife if he doesn't empty his bank account. Uh, and then by the end of it, it turns out that they both pass because they both got so much money that there's no longer a need for them to fight. And they have, like, mutual respect handshake. <laughs> yeah, they have, like, an done. agreement. <laughs> this well, episode was really fucking funny because is. they have all of this extremely intense, like, music and, like, set the way it's, like, the way everything's drawn where they keep showing, like, the dramatic close-up of the faces and, like, the freeze frame while the, they're threatening each other and stuff. <laughs> That's great, and then there's also some really good, like the ending moment. They had they play a sad song specifically for when the men are completely because they they sell everything. They don't have any clothes. They have nothing, and they play a sad song. And there's like a haiku <laughs> that goes over them, <laughs> which is really funny. And then at the end, he goes like, "Why are you?" I think uh, Gadoki says, "Why are you playing such a sad song over us? <laughs> We're not." Dead. Well, it's one of the best funny. jokes in the episode is when they're sitting at the bar and Gintoki doesn't really want to be there and he's like uh, so what happens now do I like, touch her butt or something and she elbows him in the face 
<laughs> and he's bleeding, and she's like, "Oh my god, you're so turned on. You have a nosebleed." And he's like, "She can't even remember what happened two, two frames, frames ago." ago. That's <laughs> very good, uh, and also a good <laughs> follow up of going back to that because there's also a pretty good moment from when uh, the reason she took down that guy is because she touched her butt, and then they start talking about how the butt is like um, angel wings that have fallen off or something. And then the guy she beat up wakes up and goes like, the the breasts are actually wings as well. And then she beats him down and says, no, they're not. They're missiles. <laughs> yeah, they're leftovers from when we were like attack robots. And we were attack robots. And <laughs> what kind of person are you building? <laughs> we also didn't mention it's all the way at the beginning, but there's a letter from Umi Bozo. Uh, explaining basically how he's been doing, like writing a letter to Kagura. And in the letter, he goes, Hello, Kagura. My hair has not grown back. <laughs> it's like, Yeah, he says that like his, his hair is fully dead now, but he's yes. okay otherwise. I'm okay otherwise. It also reveals that maybe he knew all along that Sadaharu was some kind of demon because he goes, like, Hey, by the way, you should really get rid of that thing because it's going to be a problem later on and then it goes like oh no no it's fine but it's kind of also i think a a follow up to i guess a reminder of, of other things but i like that moment i liked him writing her a letter also there's a full on gundam parody of the first mobile suit gundam uh down to having the do chara and i had to look this up cuz i was like there's no way they, that's actually chara how the hell did they actually get away with this and i looked it up they changed the design so slight. It's like uh, in the actual design, he wears a full-on crest. And in this one, he has like a, a yellow crest that's halfway done. And that's all they did to change the character. <laughs> Otherwise, he looks 100% like he does in Noble Suit. Which <laughs> I thought... I was like, damn, that's uh, some intense bordering the line of copyright somewhere down, <laughs> down the line. Because if I just looked at it, I was like, no, they just straight up got the guy. Um, I like that Kondo was the answer to her problem. She really should have asked Kondo from the beginning because Gintoki and Hasegawa are like fucking poor, poor more poor than anything else. Absolutely <laughs> dirt poor, yeah. I'm pretty sure Hasegawa sleeps on the, like, a park bench <laughs> with a bum friend. <laughs> That's, like, probably the best place you could find him. And Gintoki has, not obviously, somehow less money than that. And even though he, he can afford... He, he's able to live through kindness, basically. That's the only ways he's able to keep a house. She should just ask Kondo from the beginning. And then also Kondo's realization of the money is coming from what he's been saving for marriage. <laughs> Uh-huh. and he wastes so much money trying to his save marriage it. fund and he uses all of it yeah he uses all of it and then he has to sell his soul his soul he's like my samurai sword is my soul i can't just sell that and then kentucky's saying like hey just do it my sword isn't anything special i found it on an infomercial yeah i bought it off an infomercial and hasagawa was like you said you bought it from a wizard yeah you bought it from a wizard <laughs> pretty good i also like when they're doing the bit where they're conning him because like i think because th they think that they are getting like a, some kind of cheap deal uh but then when they go into the menu all of it is the don the don perry and he's like don perry don perry uh one of the drinks is don perry mixed with don perry <laughs> Yeah, it's just mixed together. I also like when they're giving the subliminal advertising where one of them ends every sentence with Dom and the other one ends it with Perry. Dom and Gintoki's Perry. like, they're attacking our senses. <laughs> That's really good. Um, yeah, the, the also like the... So in the beginning when they're saying like, oh, I'm not going to do the contest with you, Tay says that. And then they have like this very like sweet moment and you think like, oh, she really is going to just for Because she says she's going to forfeit the battle. Um, but then there's like a slight like, it's borderline like, you know how at the end of the Thriller music video, there's a close up of Michael Jackson's eyes. It's kind of, they kind of do that with her where there's like an ominous like ting and then they go up to her, her eyes. <laughs> and then they show the next day where she's like, yeah. she has not given up. And then she reveals like, no, I am <laughs> going to destroy you. <laughs> I also like when they have that moment in the street. And Ote is like, "Good luck. I'm I'm wishing the best for you." And uh, then they get back to the uh, hostess club, and she's like, "I never gave a shit." 
Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't give a shit about what you myself. I'm out yeah, here looking for my shit what you're going through. I'm looking after my father's dojo. Close up to her. <laughs> so it ended up being a super I also did like when Matsudari shows up too, and he's just like, let's go. Also the reveal that maybe the Shishingumi and the the police maybe get paid a little bit too much <laughs> based on how yeah, much crazy. They, a shitload of money. they make so much money off of this one. It makes me think that maybe they get paid just a little bit too much. But I really liked it. As I said, I've liked how the series has progressed further and further, making Tay just an extreme, violent person. I think it, 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 you, the, the hints of it started pretty early, but then after she knocked the shit out of Kondo with the uh, uh, Ippo punch... I think she's turned more violent as time has gone, yeah, gone she, on. Yeah, her character seems to mostly just be beating the shit out of people now. Beating, yes, beating the shit out of people, but also, like, dropping some of the craziest, like, border, like, it almost feels like she's trying to give Sage advice, but it's all, like, garbage advice. <laughs> None of it makes any sense. Like, talking about the, the missiles and the former race of human beings of what we looked like and stuff like that. Uh, but I really like it, and so I enjoyed all of this, and, and enjoyed the kind of battle between the two, and it ended with everyone kind of just, like, in a bad position, <laughs> and them making peace somehow. Uh, there was also a bit here with the Ginpachi sensei which was really funny, where they said, like, how to draw uh, um, Gintoki, draw a normal person, and then just kind of add some ca four cowlicks to the person, and... <laughs> they said how to draw Shinpachi draw the most average person that you know add glasses okay you have drawn Shinpachi well they, they, they said even for they said draw the most average person you know and make sure that it doesn't <laughs> evoke any strong emotion whatsoever <laughs> none whatsoever it's just like completely unmemorable yeah and then the, the fun the real funny part was when it goes like how to draw Kagura okay take the shimp draw Shinpachi uh, remove the hair color, remove the glasses, you've made Kagura. And I looked at him and was like, holy shit, he, you, you just basically make up that way. And then he reveals like every single character is based off of Shinpachi. If you could just draw Shinpachi, you could draw most of the cast. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, what do they say at the end? It's like, let's Shinpachi. Let's Shinpachi, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I like that reveal. It was it's it's really funny when you're seeing him draw it because it, it's it, I thought it was gonna be the joke was gonna be like um oh like oh draw this and then add this little tiny thing. It's kind of like those uh the the meme drawings of how to draw the perfect Pikachu or something. It's like draw a circle, okay, then draw Pikachu. I thought it was gonna be like that kind of joke, but no, it wasn't. It was ended up being way funnier. The idea that Shinpachi is the base form of basically every character. So yeah, good episode to start off with here. Do you have anything else specific to say about it? No, nothing too fan. It was just a quality episode. It wasn't like yeah. world breaking, but it was funny. I enjoyed it. Yeah, very enjoyable. I think that's a, a good way to kind of pronounce a lot of these episodes. Actually, as we end the yeah, I don't think any of the episodes tonight were particularly amazing, but they were all pretty good. No. Yeah, they were. All, they all worked uh, perfectly fine. They got a groove going on, which settles up things. Um, and it's also, like I said, near the end of the season, so it's kind of like no time to do any big story thing at this point, so kind of just enjoy with what we got here and maybe introduce some new characters and stuff like that. And speaking of introducing new characters, we have episode 47, Do Cherries Come From Cherry Trees? Uh, which is, yeah, that's the official title, which is episode 47. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about it, Zen? So, uh, the the gang gets a new neighbor named Hedero, who looks like a stereotypical, like, demon. Like, he's got horns and sharp teeth and scary eyes and shit. Um, the episode begins with Gintoki ha having sleep paralysis. Um, and he's, like, begging for them to help him, only for him to overhear Shinpachi say that uh, they don't have enough money to do the episode. So the editors are just going to leave him in sleep paralysis <laughs> for an entire episode. And a fake title card comes up that just says Gintoki has sleep paralysis. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, then he wakes up from a, with a sneeze. And the proper episode begins. Uh, and there's an epidemic of, like, hay fever. Because mm -hmm. there's some kind of crazy alien form of pollen. Um, who is that's making everyone sick. Um, 
Kakura throws Shinpachi through a window, I think because they're fighting for some reason. Um, yep. And they see a giant house outside. And it turns out that's the house of their new neighbor who brings them a little like flower. And he says that he runs a flower shop and they all freak out because he looks like a monster. Um, and they assume that the pollen is, is evil in some way, except for Kagura, who like defends him. Um, and they make like an entire elaborate plan for him where Kentucky's like, he's going to poison the world with these flowers so that there's no defense to stop him from taking it over or anything. Um, and so they end up like, trying to spy on him with like a shitty disguise um, where Kentucky <laughs> is like pretending to be Kagura's father and pushing her in this cart. Um, it's like a... And then uh... Shipachi comes out and... It's a it's a parody of some manga, but I don't know what it is. It's a manga, but also that turns into a parody of the Lone Wolf and Cub as well, the samurai films. It turns it's it starts as a parody of one thing and then it evolves into a parody of another thing <laughs> when they start speaking, I think. But continue on. Uh yeah. Um so Shimpachi comes out, falls down, and he takes them inside to like make some snacks for them because he thinks they just brought him like the neighborhood ledger. Yeah. Um, he gives the backstory about like, he knows that he looks terrifying and that's why he likes flowers because they're beautiful and all this stuff. And they don't buy it at all. I think <laughs> it's at one point in even says, don't judge a book by its cover is something stupid. People will say. <laughs> yeah, that's what he says when he's in there. When he's giving his backstory, yeah. I think he says like, you're the only ones who have never been afraid of me. And then they say, and it says, Oh my God, if only you knew we're terrified. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um Kintoki finally decides they're gonna try to he's gonna like save the world. Uh so he pulls his sword and rushes at him and he uh Hedera throws a rock at Kintoki and he to stop him from stepping on a ladybug because he says killing is bad. Uh and Shinpachi and Kagura just like haul ass out of there and just start running. They're, um, they're gonna run over flowers and he stops them and he says, Please yeah. mind the flowers. <laughs> yeah, don't Murder. run over the flowers. Uh, Gintoki charges at him again, and they both run away again. Uh, and Shimpachi is like, I, I'm sorry, Gintoki, I can't do it. And then Kagura says something like, I can't put my life on the line for someone else. <laughs> <laughs> she says, like, just tell Gintoki that we'll live uh, his life for him, and then we can run. Mm-hmm. And then Gintoki ends up running past them, even faster than they are. And they're trying to decide who should stay behind and die to get killed by the demon. And uh, Kentucky goes, Shimpachi will live your life for you, so you stay behind. <laughs> uh, and they end up getting to the top of his tower, and he's like chasing after them. Uh, and they jump off, and he catches them. And it turns out that he actually is a good guy, and they were just being awful to him the whole time. Yeah. Um, and so they they say that like in the end... Everything was fine. Nothing was taken over, but people are still sick from all the pollen. Yeah, which chances are is coming from his flowers. Um, so this episode uh, is another one that I thought was perfectly fine. I ended up really liking it once they started, once they actually went inside the house and started uh, messing with him. Uh, Hidora, he has an introduction, which is really funny. He says his name is Kanji. He, he means fart. Do means anger, and Ro means Robin Mask, and Robin Mask is a character from Kaniku Man. <laughs> so I liked the, the the Robin Mask reference there. But in general, I like whatever they done. They they're animating him in the most scary way possible, where every where like they'll give a close up on his face, and it'll be like the close up of like some kind of demon. But then he'll say things like hello neighbor <laughs> it'll be very like yeah <laughs> it's like he and he keeps getting shots from like behind like where he turns around and looks over his shoulder like sinisterly yeah. and then he's like oh hello thank you for bringing this to me ah uh, yes exactly what yeah he keeps doing things like that there's a, when they're doing the bit with each other where they're giving the backstory for their characters which is so dumb because their initial plan is that to give him the ledger he needs he needs a distraction so that he can just give it to him casually and they're causing a distraction by doing being the um, the B and the C, and Shibachi is the A. But then when they're doing the B and the C bit, they have like this elaborate backstory about like why does why does she only say this one word cha over and over again? I think is the word. And cha cha, 
And <laughs> in the middle of the backstory, Chimpanji goes like, why are you giving such an elaborate backstory? I don't need this. But then when he's giving yeah, it, it's they, too much. It's too much. And then they cut to Hidora and he's crying. <laughs> he's crying at the backstory that they're giving to him. He also is not like saying it to him directly. And Toki's just like literally saying it out loud while being in his general vicinity. So it's funny in general. And also I re- I ended up really liking the character too, dude too, because he literally is just like the most softest but also extremely violent demon in the world. <laughs> Because the way he, when he throws the rock, it, like, completely leaves the house. There's, like, no chance. Yeah, it, like, shatters through the roof. Yeah, easily. Easily. And it was all to protect the ladybug, which was funny. Um, there's also a point where right before, when, after Kintoki talks about how people who say, don't judge a book by a cover are idiots... He says the reason that he doesn't trust them is because he's a te- look at his fridge and you see that his fridge is being held up by copies of Jump. Yeah, he says anyone that treats Jump like that <laughs> is a villain. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was really funny. It was like, oh yeah, why is he doing that? Because it seems like a very silly thing to just kind of do in general. Um, I also, I also like-, like the, uh, oh, yeah. the bit where Kagura... Is like I, maybe he's a good guy, and it's like a picture of him holding a cat, and then Gintoki's like, "No, he's gonna eat that cat." Yeah, he's gonna eat him. <sighs> That's also when he's explaining the um, <clears throat> what what the gap is, which is something funny enough I've always heard of in um, anime stuff because I've heard of gap moe, and I was like, "What is that?" I know what moe means because that means cute, but I never understood what the gap part was. But then they explain what the gap is, is that when a bad person does a good act, it makes it seem like they're more good. But if a uh, good character does an evil thing, then they seem way more evil, and that's the gap. Yeah, they're, like, hated. Yeah, they're and hated. And Shibachi's like, so you're calling me, like, Satan? <laughs> yeah, I guess he was the example <laughs> he used for the... <laughs> for the, uh, for the good guy doing one evil deed. And, uh... uh Gintoki dressed up as like a punk was his example of someone who is generally evil doing a good thing. <laughs> so I like the explanation of the gap. I remember what they were arguing about. It's because they wanted him to go get tissues. Kagura wanted Shinpachi to go get tissues because that's all he was good for. And then when she throws him against it and then he starts ringing the doorbell, he's like, go answer the doorbell because that's all you're good for. It's like, why are yeah, you keep saying like that? Yeah. And that's also the point, I think, where um, he stands up and he has, like, a shard of wood stuck in his forehead. Yes, it, it is. And he get, the more he starts arguing with him, the deeper it starts bleeding as well. Uh, I also like after he leaves the, the plant, because he gives them a plant as, like, a welcome to the neighborhood kind of thing. Uh, but at some point, they think it's a bomb. And they leave. They they start to leave the room. And as they're leaving the room, Sadaharu is still with the with the plant. And Kakura is like, "No, we have to go back for Sadaharu." And he, they're like, literally, still in the same room. And he's like, "No, you have to leave him behind." Yeah, leave him. <laughs> leave him. <laughs> it's like they're so close by. <laughs> and he's like, "No, I don't want to leave him like this. No, Sadaharu." And I think it's during this, that's when Catherine walks in and just fucking just throws the book at them. And says, here you go, neighborhood, whatever it is. Which I had no idea what what that was, so I'm assuming it's some kind of Japanese also, thing. Also, it's really funny that he um, he gets, like, punched over there by uh, Kagura. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Catherine walks in to give him the book and she like throws it as hard as she can directly at his face. <laughs> she does. That was pretty good. I also like them uh, when um when they're giving the book cuz uh, when Shipachi gives them the book, he trips over because his sandal breaks and it lands it like directly in the eyes of the dude and he's like it's okay. But then one of the threatening things he says is that a broken sandal is a sign of bad luck. And then he does the whole turn back thing and says, I hope that doesn't mean there's any bad luck for you. <laughs> and he goes, oh, okay. And it's like terrifying. And then there's a point where Kentoki says, like, I have to go. My father's is in, it's in intensive care. And then the, mo- and then the <laughs> Hidora goes like, what? 
I have to go with you. I need to make sure that I need to see if he's going to be okay. He's like, why does he want to go with us? <laughs> and then he goes like, actually, I don't want to go. My father was a bastard. <laughs> he was a, a terrible person. He's like, oh, well. I was like, I hope he dies soon. He was like, ah, oh, well, I could tell me when and I'll give you some flowers for his funeral and I hope that he can find peace wherever he is. But it's, again, shot in such a way to make it seem like it's the most terrifying thing that you've ever seen. <laughs> it is really just one joke, but the one joke is pretty good because of how nice this guy is trying to be. Yeah, he's really, like, going out of his way to be the nicest person ever. He is. And they're being such dicks to him. <laughs> Unbelievable bastards to this nice alien man. It also is an influx of most of the mottos are kind of assholes, but this is one that's 100% a good guy. There's just, like, no way around it for this one. Uh, I also like when they think that they found his sacrificial art, um, sacrificial altar, and it's just his bed. And he just, like, sleeps on a stone tablet for some reason. <laughs> I guess that's when... So, like, uh, when, um, they, uh, he opens, like, his soup pot. And they look in the pot, and it's like they're skulls. Yeah. It's like, this is what's actually going to be <laughs> happening to us. He's going to cook us alive. <laughs> and uh, there's also a... I also like that at the end when he does save them. There's not like a big, like, oh, there's not like a big moment of like, oh, he's actually good. It's more like a, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's a very yeah, quiet... they're there's not a... like... <laughs> There's no lesson here. They're not, here. like, happy about it, really. They're just like, oh. Thank, thanks. <laughs> thanks a lot, man. <laughs> so, I, it ended up being another just good episode. Kind of an introduction for this character, too. Because I realized that during the ED of this one, he was the monster guy who's been in the ED this entire time. Because I was wondering, who the hell is that guy? Yes, He's, in that picture. Yeah. yeah, it's like a weird monster web, but there you go, it's him. There's also a funny bit when they're sneezing, because there's a very specific way, I guess, how, I guess, Japanese people sneeze. But then when it gets to Kagura, she goes, Michael Jackson. Yeah, and they, like, they just kind of do it. They do it at the end, too, where they just, like, Janet sneeze like crazy at each other. Magic Johnson. Yeah, and at one point, doesn't he go, like, you can't say Michael Jackson, it's a sneeze, so it has to be Janet Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Which is very good. Uh, so yeah, the pretty good episode overall, and good introduction for this character. Again, one very good one joke basically, but it's a well delivered joke in my eyes. Yes, I was a fan of the joke as well. I thought it was really funny. So let's move on to the next episode, which is episode forty eight. The more you're alike, the more you fight. Which is. This one, okay, I remember this one. Because of my sickness, at a certain point, I stopped I making detailed notes, and I just started putting down some very specific ones. For this one, I just have my neighbor, Pedro. So go ahead and tell us what this... <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and tell us what this episode's about, Zen? Uh, so, uh, it's a two-parter. <clears throat> yes. The first part is a group of assassins want to kill Hijikata so they can be, like, the new top guys on the anti-alien group um and they follow him and everywhere they follow him to gintoki is also there and they start fighting <laughs> everywhere they go um like they're good they go to a restaurant and they fight with each other because hichikata gets a mayonnaise bowl with like a bowl of rice with mayonnaise on it yeah. and gintoki gets a bowl of rice with beans on it and they start fighting and arguing over which one's better um Right, buddy. Yeah, and like they keep they keep thwarting this guy by involving him in their arguments. Like they make him eat the food and he almost dies. And then they go to a movie theater and they start yelling at each other in the movie theater and then they tell the angry mob that this guy is the one <laughs> who's causing all the problems and not them and for some reason it works. 100%. Um, and then... Uh, they decide that they're going to try to avoid each other by thinking like the other one. And that just results in them going to the same place again. And they're at a sauna. Um, and they keep turning up the heat to try to make the other one leave. And Gintoki finally like passes out. And he collapses on the ground. And he's like, tell tell them the, I, bye-bye for me. Like to talking about Kagura and Shimpanji. 
and Hijikata starts dragging him away in like a heroic gesture. And then it turns out that he was faking it. Uh, and he tries to attack him. And so they fight for a minute, and then uh, they end up in their, their fight. They knock the assassin out again. Pretty good. Yeah, that's the end of part one for this one. Uh, this part ended up being <laughs> super fucking funny. Uh, the, the beginning where they're talking about the Hijikata special and the uh, the Kentucky Don, which is sweet beans over rice. The way that they keep like saying to this guy, I think they keep saying, right, buddy? It's like, that's how they always end it. They don't even say his, they never ask for his name. They just keep calling him buddy, 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 buddy. And they keep forcing yeah, him. Yeah, they don't ever sh- use his actual name. <laughs> never. They don't care about that at all. The when he goes to the movie theater, this movie that they're fucking showing, which is a parody of My Neighbor Toto Totoro, called My Neighbor Pedro, <laughs> um, is so fucking. I don't know why it caught me off guard. It was so funny. It's literally just the plot of My Neighbor Totoro, but they've replaced Totoro with a fat cop called Pedro. And it works for some stupid fucking reason. <laughs> so in the beginning, well, also of the... there's like the one point where, um... <laughs> yeah, well they do that, and then Hichikana's in the audience crying. He is crying, and he gives the great line of like what people say about uh, what used to say about Pixar movies anyway. <laughs> before, <laughs> before uh, Lightyear. Now that we live in a post Lightyear world, he says. um... The kids' movies speak to adults, too, and it's a movie all adults should see. And this is after the character. All the character has said is, you try calling the cops after the little girl says, like, my mom is sick and I need to find my... <laughs> She's, like, basically telling the ending bits of uh, Totoro, where uh, her sister is missing. And there's just cops just saying, you try calling the cops? <laughs> and telling her all this stuff, and he's crying in the, in the fucking theater over this movie. Um... That bit's great, but then there's also the bit of Gintoki in the theater. Uh, Hitchikata is crying so much he can't hear what's going on in the movie, so he has no idea what Pedro just said. <laughs> he's like, and he's also crying because he's crying over the movie. Yeah, he's, like, he's up further back, and he's like, "Oh, are you crying, you loser!" And then he's crying. <laughs> he's crying too. Um, and then when the whole fight breaks out, I also like that Hidora is there and he's the one that stops them from fighting. He's like, please, let's all just enjoy the movie. <laughs> After he's thrown the dude, the would-be assassin, directly into the theater, everyone just kind of stops, finishes the movie, and just cries over it. Um, but I also like that bit when they when the guy tries to get in the middle, when he somehow gets in the middle of them. Also, when uh, uh, Gintoki starts throwing the popcorn... And it's just like an unlimited supply of popcorn. He's just throwing it at Jakarta's face. Yeah, he just keeps throwing it. Yeah, <laughs> he just won't stop. He has an unlimited supply of it. Uh, I also like when they um, when they start blaming the guy because it's very clear he didn't say shit. He doesn't say anything. <laughs> he doesn't even try to speak or anything. They just say like, "Oh yeah, if anyone's got a problem with all this talking, then they can deal with me." Says this guy right between us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He'll take on whoever you got, and then they all start fighting each other, which is great. Yeah, and he's like, why would I say that? And they just keep going. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, that that movie, My Neighbor Pedro, it hurt to laugh. But I laughed at it so much. It comes out of nowhere, especially because I also really like Totoro. And Totoro's a very beautiful and touching movie. And just for Totoro to be replaced with this fucking fat dude. <laughs> <laughs> It was really funny. <laughs> and then when they leave the theater, also there's posters of it, and there's just, like, full-on posters of this fat dude flexing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty good. And um, then in the final bit with the spa, I really liked it because the assassin who's watching over them, he's basically locked it so that even if they tried to get out, they would still be dead. But when he sees uh, Hijikata going to go save Kentucky, he's moved by the brave souls, as he says, by their brave spirit. <clears throat> yeah, by their brave, like, warrior spirits. Yes. So he opens the door for them, and then the second he opens the door, that's when Gidoki comes in, drop-kicking Hijikata, saying, Ha, I faked it the entire time! <laughs> and then when he's saying that, Hijikata's <laughs> like, I knew what you were thinking anyway. <laughs> yeah, and they just start fighting. Just start, yep, yeah, start beating the shit out of each other, and it's really good. I also like that they censored him for a little bit at the bottom, <laughs> which I thought was a funny touch. Um... 
just in general to have some censoring. I doubt that there would be anything to censor, but just the idea of like, ah, oh, there might be something here. I'm going to censor it a little bit, which is funny to me. Um, also, way back in the beginning, there's a part where they're showing Hijikata's picture. And in Hijikata's picture, Okita's looking ready to shoot Hijikata. <laughs> <laughs> He's, like, got, like, a disguise and everything. He's got, like, a gun pointed at him. So I just thought it was funny is that while they were talking about assassinating Hijikata, Okita was already ready to do basically the same thing. <laughs> I also liked in the beginning of this one, the OP was in fast forward because they said they had too much stuff to go on. So they're just like, well, we're, the, the OP is going to be a little bit fast this time. So it actually plays in super fast motion at the start of it, which I thought was good, which was a good gag. And then they also say sorry over it for having to speed up the song and everything. So, yeah. <clears throat> Enjoyable last part. Some funny bits here. And I like seeing Hijikata just screw around Gintoki a little bit. <laughs> it had been a while since. I can uh, compare this to when the first time we saw each other. It's actually kind of crazy how much has changed. The, the dynamic between them has changed, I guess. <laughs> and how the jokes have continued on forward. It's an interesting thing. Anything else you want to say about part one before we go into part two? Uh, no, I don't think so. <clears throat> All right, then. Why don't you tell us what uh, part two is about here, then? So part two is uh, Kagura is out like in an alleyway playing with some kids. And they're like, ah, oh, you play too rough. And she's like, pussies. And they run off. And she ends up playing with like this old man. And uh, she gets everyone involved in it. And simultaneously, there's a funeral for the um, the Jump Ninja's uh, father. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> it turns out that he is like an old man that loved to kick the can. Um, and they're playing like this intense game of kick the can with this old man. Uh, to the point that Kagura is shooting her umbrella gun at it, the can and he's blocking all the bullets and shit. Uh, but they have like a sweet bonding moment over it, and then uh, <clears throat> we see him in the funeral, and he's like in the casket. I don't actually understand entirely what happened because they're like having the funeral, and he's dead right there. But then I don't know if that like I I think the implication meant is to be before he died, or I think that was his spirit. Okay, that's my I don't know if that's what it was this. supposed to be. Yeah, that's that's okay. what I got from it. Um, yeah, and they have like an intense battle, the three of them, with this old man playing kick the can. Yeah. It was very nice. It was a very nice kind of look into it. Um I actually like that this is the first animated thing ever to have ever explained to me what the fuck the rules of kick the can were. Cause I have never understood what the point I didn't even know there were rules to it. I thought it was literally just kicking. Okay, cans. so me and you both have grown up in the Western view of kick the can, where kick the can was a joke. The joke was right. people like to play kick the can in the Simpsons. That's what they made old. fun of. Yeah, because yeah. they're old. They played kick the pills in the Simpsons at the end when the old people have taken over and they're going everywhere. It's like, oh, yeah, they're playing Kick the Cans, but instead it's Kick the Pills and stuff like that. And there's a, and I think in Cow and Chicken, there's an entire joke over Kick the Can, Kick the Can, and it kicks the turtle. But I've only ever known Kick the Can as a joke. Never actually as to what the hell is the game of Kick the Can. <laughs> and this is the first thing they ever explained it to me. So I appreciated it for that alone, because it was like a an ending of a, uh, over 30 years of trying to go what the hell is this thing <laughs> what is this game that all the old people apparently loved to play back in the day uh, and actually did seem kind of like a fun game so whatever on that one on, for me at least uh, I liked the kind of like <laughs> how much uh, Zensho seems to absolutely hate his father and you think it's like some kind of resentment towards the way he was brought up and then he reveals it in the funeral it's because his jump sold his dad sold all his jump <laughs> for poor he said all my bag yeah is for, jump. for porn books he took it to a used bookstore yeah and he has maybe one of my favorite lines ever after he says that after he has an emotional opera he says i'm sorry i've said many things but in summary he was a crappy father <laughs> and that's how he ends the funeral of everyone watching this uh, is like the coughing his ass episode it is, but you know what? I can't. I can't hold it. I knew it was gonna happen, but it's gonna have to happen. 
Um, I also like it when I think uh, who drops in here? Sachan, yeah, Sachan drops in, and she shows up like saying like I heard the master was in trouble, and he's like, yeah, that was two days. It was in critical condition. He's like, yeah, that was two days ago. He's dead now. <laughs> We're at the yeah. You know, he took too long. You took too long. He's like, damn you, critical condition. But then when she's talking with the other ninjas on the team, and she's like, remember how much he used to love playing kick the can? And then she goes like, ah, uh, yes, I do seem to recall that. And then she gets angry. He goes like, if you can't remember it, then don't bother trying to pretend to remember it. Either. <laughs> <clears throat> There's a great line here at the beginning where Kagura says all men are scum. And then later on, Gintoki says the exact same line. <laughs> Quiet. Men are all scum. Because he was talking about, like, you shouldn't talk to strangers, strange men. He's like, well, I'm an old man. Does that change anything? And then that's when she says all men are scum. And then he, when he says the same thing to Gintoki, he says, Quiet. Men are all scum. And then when he's going with Fatosa, he says, old ladies are awesome, you know, because all because she offered to pay for food. Also, it doesn't what he he like gives some explanation for it. And the explanation ends up spelling old bitch. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> it fully plays it as she gets pissed off at him. But yeah, ended up being a very nice episode. I like the ninja stuff. I think at one point someone said uh, no pervert, uh, no mere pervert could be a teacher at a ninja school, uh, which is what um, Zensh Zensho used to describe his father. It made me think of immediately Kakashi because I was like, that's maybe the, one of the most... It's, uh, the most yeah, like a Kakashi Jiraiya reference kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I was taking it as. Two of the most uh, famous pervert ninjas in the in the history of Konoha. In the business, yeah. The third being uh, Naruto, who is the Kogage, whose most famous technique is, of course, uh, the sexy jutsu, so they have their own thing to go there. And anything in Konoha, you're more likely to be taught by an amazing pervert than anything else. <laughs> That's true. With what it's like, alright, all good. But, yeah. <clears throat> Very enjoyable. Uh, second part here. So I didn't feel like I did think that part one was funnier, but I kind of like the little emotional bit here of just kind of like, um, you know, just kind of enjoying you the idea of just enjoying fun and having fun with it, regardless of your age, and just kind of learning to remember that stuff like that. So it ended up being a very nice, sweet thing. So it's kind of the perfect way I want kind of these two parts to go is to one to be kind of sweet and the other one to be mostly funny. And this one kind of works out that way. Still not as good as the the one with the um, <clears throat> the the fireworks maker, but still fair, still pretty good. That's what I got to say. Oh no, the fireworks maker one cleared for sure. But yes, it was for good. sure, for sure. But um, you know, in the same ilk, but not in the same, but yes. not on the same level, of course. Right. Uh, what do you feel? It was good. It was solid. I enjoyed it. Uh, I think I liked the Hijikata episode a little bit more. Um, but I liked both. It's hard to uh, top my neighbor Pedro, or Pedro. I guess it's Pedro, not Pedro. I just keep calling him Pedro. Yeah, it, it's like Pedro or something. Pedro, Pedro, something but it's, like that. It's very close to Pedro. And yeah, and that cop's kind of brown, so I'm kind of taking this, you know, as a Hispanic. <laughs> I'm allowed to say I think I'm gonna call it Pedro and end it there. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm dying here. Speaking of dying here. <laughs> terrible transition next episode <laughs> we got episode 49 which is called a life without gambling is like sushi without wasabi that's a hell of a title of a, of a thing to be called it is quite the title uh so hasagawa and gintoki are uh they're just kind of hanging out the extra reason i think are they just hanging out? Yeah, I, I thought they had a reason for Oh, Hasegawa's, like, giving him some kind of, like, speech about, like, the Kabuki district of, uh, their fucking town. Kabu Chico, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, um, something like that. And, uh, they end up at a casino, and they lose almost immediately, um, and they run into an old gambler who gives them their clothing back, and he's like, uh, I'm a I'm a luck reader. I can I can see uh, people's luck. 
and shit. And they're like, whoa. Uh, and then it turns out he was just cheating the whole time. Uh, with, like, uh, loaded dice or something. That he, or car, he had, like, fake cards. He had, cards. like, everything cheat. Yeah, in, like, a bag. Yeah, and he was cheating like crazy. Um, and he he ends up losing a bunch himself because he no longer has his cheating stuff, and they call him out on it. But then they get caught by security, who thinks they're all cheating. Um, and this, like, the Princess Kata or something, um, just yeah, the owner Kajaka. of the casino. Yeah. And says that uh, cheating is, like, punished by death and stuff, and they're going to have to, like, gamble for their lives. And they end up at a mahjong table. Uh, and for some reason, Hasegawa's in a panda costume while the other two just get suits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for some reason I don't know either. I yeah. thought it was funny. It was funny though. Um and like a legendary Mahjong champion comes in, he like plays Mahjong for the Yakuza or some shit. Um and they play like a shitload and it turns out that Kentucky doesn't even know the rules. Um and Gintoki ends up drawing an incredible hand and winning them around, and they say, like, the, the flow of luck has turned, and they start, like, using anime super attacks on this guy with Mahjong tiles, <laughs> like, uh, Gintoki does a sure you can. Um, I thought it was the Dragon Fist. The Super Saiyan 3 Dragon No, it Fist? was, uh, it was Rising Dragon Fist, which is sure oh, you can. Okay. My bad. Um, <clears throat> ah, fuck. And the other guy does some sort of blast with them, too. And uh, they all end up naked because they decide they're going to play strip Mahjong because they ran out of money a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, and the guy says, fine, whatever. And he... Uh, I think he's going to try to cheat because he has, like, four tiles behind his back. Uh, but it ends up that Hasegawa's hand is, like, the, the heaven hand, like, the ultimate Mahjong hand or something. Yeah, it is the ultimate um, Mahjong, from what I understand of Mahjong. Yeah. And then, uh... She looks down at the table and notices that one of the colors, the tile colors was wrong, which means it was fake. Um, and she has, like, a, well, gambling or whatever, like, monologue at the end, and then the episode ends. Uh, and then they've also again lose everything in a dice game again <laughs> like after that moment of being like ah yes and then they end up losing it again and they're back in their skivvies yeah again. they're like quick while well, we still have luck and then it doesn't yep and then also in the nice thing that this episode ends with a so this begin this episode begins with the ed <clears throat> But it ends with the OP and then all the moments for the 49 other episodes plays. Yes. Which I yes. thought was actually kind of nice. It was a nice, like... Yeah, I thought anime. that was cool, too. Yeah. I like it when animes do that, where it's kind of like, check out all this shit you've seen. And I'm like, damn, I remember that. How that far you've cool. come. Yeah. yeah. I think more anime should do that, especially if they do a, a shit ton of episodes. It's always nice, I think. Um, <clears throat> now for the actual episode itself. Uh, I think I ended up uh, enjoying this episode. I think I once it got kind of going, the beginning of it I thought was maybe a little bit slow, but there was some good stuff in the beginning. I like it when Gintoki and Hasegawa hang out because they're like two. Um, I think they said at one point it feels like the Lord of Poverty is hanging over our shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> They're like the most poor thing that you can imagine when you put both of them together. Somehow, if you put both of their monies together, they somehow come out with less money. <laughs> That's how poor it feels <laughs> like when they're together. <clears throat> so I like seeing them together. Um, <clears throat> I also should mention, because I've completely forgot this. So remember when we were talking about in the last episode, Orochimaru's VA was a Tose? <clears throat> Apparently, Hijikata Hasegawa, not Hijikata, Hasegawa's VA is also the same one who does Gendo. So that's why he did the Gendo pose, because he, share, he shares the same VA. Oh, okay. I was like, okay. And then that made me completely change. It was like, God, I had no idea that the dude who did <laughs> Gendo could also be so funny at times. Who knew? Uh, also, another thing from follow-up, someone actually did the due diligence for us and looked up what happens when you pee on a worm, 
if that was a thing in Japan. Turns out it is, because back in the day, or I don't know if kids in Japan still do that, and if you live in Japan and you see this happen, please tell us. Apparently back in the day, Japanese kids used to just pee on animals. It was just a thing they did for fun. I, I don't know why, but let's go with it. But through that act, they learned that some worms secrete poison that flows up the stream of pee. And that's what causes oh. poison to enter it. And I learned that, and Gross. I said, holy shit, that's terrifying. That makes me respect yeah, that's awful. so that's much the worst more. thing I've ever heard. It is. And I was like, well, thank you, Japanese school children. I will never do that <laughs> ever in my life if I can <laughs> avoid it. <laughs> if I'm looking in an emergency and I look at the ground and I see worms, I'm going to go, not today, Lord. I'm not doing yeah, it. Yeah, nope. Not on your creatures. I've learned a, a valuable lesson from the people, the children of Japan, who apparently went around peeing on worms and getting. <laughs> I'm We're dying. Both just I'm dying. I knew this was gonna. It's all right. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Um. So yeah, there you go. Thank you for doing your due diligence and following up with that. I thank God I remember this year right here at this moment. Um, but yeah, back at this episode, I kind of liked it when they were in their, um, underwear, they still kind of went around as if they were in their normal clothes. So their like hands were inside their underwear for some reason. Yeah. Like they had pockets. <laughs> yeah. Like they had pockets and stuff like that. <clears throat> I like it when the guy, he gives them back their clothes and then when he loses, the, when they, when they get back their clothes, they immediately go back and lose all of it. And again, it goes like, what was the point of me even winning back your clothes? If you, I told you, you guys don't belong here. <laughs> and what you do is you get your clothes back and then immediately go back in. It's like, whatever, man. I don't remember you saying anything about how you, we wouldn't have to, we didn't have to keep on doing it or whatever. Um, I liked meeting the one of the other four emperors, which is the 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 four emperors of uh, what are they called? The four emperors of the four Abu, the four de Kabuchiko, devas right? of the Kabuki district, which is Atose, it is Kujaku, and it is Saigo that we've met. I don't think we've met the fourth one yet. I don't think we have anyway. But it was nice to meet another one of them. Um. I like that when they went to go play Mahjong, there was immediate question of if this is okay for our primetime slot because uh, Mahjong has a pretty big... Apparently in Japan, Mahjong has a pretty bad reputation as being like a thing that's not for kids. As, oh, because like, it's gambling. like a gambling thing? Yeah, like a, that's yeah. why it's always in every Yakuza game. There's always like heavy betting and there's always like some form of mafia or Yakuza involved in it in some way, Chinese mafia or something like that. So he's like, shouldn't we be playing that uh, <clears throat> that pirate game, which is the game I remember most from Yu-Gi-Oh! Remember in the early manga when Joey was in one of them? The, the, the one where you stick swords in the barrel and then it comes out? Yes. Yeah. Then I was like, oh, I remember that game. I remember <laughs> early Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> I remember the manga. <laughs> Good times. Uh, I think that game is called Kurohige Kikapatsu, based off of what this wiki is telling me, so I'm going to go with that. But I just know it as that pirate game from Yu-Gi-Oh! But I, I liked hearing the reference to it. Um, I liked it when they were playing Mahjong, so I have a very... Uh, I don't know if it's the right way of saying it, but I have a very tumultuous relationship with Mahjong, in that I think I absolutely hate the game of Mahjong, because there was a game that I had, used to play back in the day, where you had to get a very specific reward before you playing Mahjong. So I had to play AI in Mahjong, and it was the worst fucking experience of my life. Because <laughs> Mahjong okay. is the most complicated-ass game that you could think of playing that is so easy to lose, so easy. There's so many rules to Mahjong about when to run, what specific things get into the right thing. Like, when he called Atari, I, when they started calling all the names of what the specific things you get in Mahjong, I started getting bad flashbacks of going, oh, no, it's happening again. <laughs> of going, it's yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't know jack shit about. No. Um, Mahjong. So. No, no, no. Mahjong is a, it's a man's game for sure. It's definitely one of those games where it's like, oh, shit. It's probably like... What's the best way I can describe it? Imagine you were playing... Um, the last time you played regular Yu-Gi-Oh! was during the Blue Eyes era. And then coming into modern day, that's how it feels like to lose in Mahjong. Because you're like, okay, 
I put down this one piece, and then this guy said, like, he's going to reach. I don't know what that means. He's, he's calling a dawn. I don't know what that means. I somehow lost 100 points. Okay. I've lost the game. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Through mo- no fault of my own completely, I'm, I've been shit on. Okay. Sure. Cool. That's what it feels like. Um, so it was kind of nice to see that replication and also to see Gintoki have absolutely zero idea how to play Mahjong and he ends up winning because of it. Yeah. <laughs> it, I loved also that he had no fucking clue what, <laughs> like what Mahjong was. No, zero. He knew what strip Mahjong was was funny enough <laughs> when he stripped. Cause I know there's also yeah. a lot of, there's also a really funny, uh, little animation he did too when he does a strip cause he goes like, ah. And he does like a full close up. He does like a a cute pose with it and everything. <laughs> yeah, he does like the trying to be like the cute girl pose. Yeah, and this was also where I learned like I guess based on their time slot because they were talking a lot about I think losing their time slot in the next one. The next one, I was like, well, this is why because you were like showing full man butt up on the screen, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> they do a close up of it at one point with the other guy. Uh, I like it when they the they ended up naked and they are doing like the special attacks, calling it out and hitting the dude with the <laughs> with the mahjong tiles. Basically, thought that was funny. And yeah, it was very nice. It ended up being one of those episodes where like not really much happened, but I enjoyed seeing Hijikata, not Hijikata, fucking Hasegawa and um, Gintoki hang around each other. It was fun. So. And yeah, again, that ending bit also really made it feel like a good like end point of like, yeah, this is a good kind of like end of season one kind of thing to me. End of season one, start of season one, part two, next episode kind kind of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> What'd you feel? I liked it. I thought it was good. Um, <clears throat> I enjoyed pretty much all of the <laughs> all of the jokes. Um. I really liked when they started doing like the uh the special moves and shit. <clears throat> All of like the uh Street Fighter attacks and everything while they were playing Mahjong. Yeah. Thought that was pretty fucking funny. Um And I do like that they they got their clothes back, lost their clothes again, and then went back in again after getting their clothes back and lost their clothes a third time. <laughs> It really is a never ending cascade of them just losing clothes over and over and over again this episode. <laughs> Never end. It's like the the bookend of it all is the clothes being lost. So yeah, pretty good episode. And that's the end of season one, part one, and the year was season one, year one, and now we start with season one, year two, with episode fifty. Who would have guessed we would have ever made it here, Zen? Fifty episodes. I know. Yeah. Flying through Gintama. It is. Thank you very much, everyone who's made it this far as well with us too. Not an easy thing, especially because there's people also rewatching it alongside us for the either for the first time or the rewatching it because they're like, I really like uh, Gintama and these dudes are experiencing it and I want to experience it with it too. Kind of rewatching it, so pretty nice. Yeah, pretty yeah. nice. So episode fifty called "Pending" means pending. It's not final. The 50th episode. And this yes, is going to be the so... <laughs> world's easiest thing. Tell us what this episode is yeah. about. <laughs> it's uh, pretty much just that they're talking about how they might end up getting cancelled. Um, and then it's pretty much just a clip show episode where every character has their own idea of what the show should be. Yeah, Kagura's is Once Upon a Time in China. China Girl, Gintama. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tose and Catherine's is Tamakure Silver Soul. N- not even calling the uh, using the literal translation for what Gintama yeah. means for Gintama. Yeah, yeah. Katsura's is the Tarazura Opera Company Gintama, which is like uh, it seems to be a confused. It, it starts one way and then it ends up being like an opera thing at the end. <laughs> the opera thing kind of gets yeah, it on starts you. completely different and then it becomes like an opera with him and Gintoki singing. Yeah. Sachans is the Sayan, the Gintama of Terror, which is a horror movie, basically. <clears throat> Ote, uh, Ote's, which is maybe my favorite, is called uh, Gintama the Movie, Dragon, uh, Drago Blee Peace. <laughs> yes, it is Dragon Ball, One Piece, and uh, Bleach, Bleach Parody. All, 
all mixed together into one thing. Uh, Hasegawa's is called Madeo, The Road of Gintama, which is a him hanging out with homeless version of Gintoki. Yeah, the homeless man. And, but then it's not actually his, remember? Because he's like, wait, who changed my thing? <laughs> yes, someone <laughs> changed his dream. Yeah. Uh, Hijikata's is called World Gintama Cooking Show, which is just a cooking show with Hijikata. Kondo's is Romantic Gintama. Um, and also Ote and Kondo, which is a uh, parody of Romeo and Juliet, where Kondo is Juliet and Ote is Romeo. <laughs> okay. Yes. Is... Well, that he has two. He has yeah, two. Yeah, the of other them. one is Romantic Gintama. Um, yes. Uh, uh, Okita's, which is just open mouth demon scream, <laughs> and. It gets omitted because of whatever the fuck he's doing when he opens yeah. his mouth. Well, yeah, he like <laughs> it like starts warping the screen, and it's like a horrible shrieking sound. Yeah, <laughs> he just like opens his mouth, and it's like, a... <laughs> ah. and yeah, and then eventually it cuts, and like we can't show you any more of this. Yeah, and then everyone who's listening, it it's like the, they've turned into they've learned the, and they've opened up the olden ones. And they're, like, completely freaking out. Like, Kagura's dancing. H- Hijikata's, like, sniffing mayonnaise. Yeah, they're all, like... <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, they're all completely losing their minds. And then Prince Hata comes in, and he has the idea of Gintama, Prince of the Jungle. And then, finally, they end the squabbling, and Kentoki says, this is what it is. He decides the future of the show, and he says, this is the future, and it's a new opening. And they show the new OP... Which is funny because the new OP leads directly into the new ED. <laughs> yeah. They... So Gintoki goes, that's it. I'm sick of all of your stuff. I'm deciding. And they're like, yeah, you're the main character. Do it. And it plays the new opening song. Um, and then as soon as the opening ends, it plays the ending. And then they're like, wait, nothing happened? <laughs> yeah, and then they come back and it's like, oh, I guess we ran out of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is great. And then, and then... Uh, there's... There's the Elizabeth thing at the end where uh, oh my God, I Elizabeth I is like, that. yeah, and he's like, I knew I shouldn't have left it up to all of you. And then they're like, uh, Katsura's like, Elizabeth, what do you mean? And he goes, I'm not Elizabeth today. And it zooms in and it's inside the Elizabeth costume is the director of the, the like the series. Yes. And, then, and he's like, uh, all right. So the solution is I'm just going to do better. From now on, I'm just gonna make better content. He apologizes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and then it, it ends with them saying like, "Hey, sorry. Next episode is a serious one, <laughs> or is more serious." Yeah. Like... <laughs> I love that... too when he when he leans up out of Elizabeth, and it's like a fucking. He's got like. Purple glowing eyes. Yeah, and it's a real picture inside of the Elizabeth. Yeah, and also Elizabeth, uh, the the sheet that makes up Elizabeth's body is, like, pulled up a little bit, and it's got, like, hairy legs sticking out and stuff. Yeah. And right when this <laughs> happened, I had to pause and I went, Shit. The homeless Elizabeth arc continues into the new season because this is another case of Katsura and Elizabeth not being next to each other. <laughs> yeah, looking like it's Elizabeth, but it's not actually. No, and I was like, where the fuck is Elizabeth? <laughs> Still out in the streets. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know if the joke was that that's not really Elizabeth. I thought the joke was that Elizabeth was the director the whole time. And the director was no longer playing the part of Elizabeth. Huh. It's a good way of seeing it, actually, now that you say it like that. Boy, the, so during specific parts, Elizabeth is possessed by the spirit of the director of Gintama to take over. Yeah. <laughs> this is all interesting lore and backstory to Elizabeth that we're filling out here. I know we say, I say all the time I want to hear more about Gintama's backstory, but this... Amazing, intricate backstory that we're giving to Elizabeth seems just as interesting to me. I uh, when that moment happened, I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Because it really is like a real ass person in there. I was like, "Okay, sure." This episode, we're gonna go over the specific parodies here because there's some real good parts in all of them. But this was just a really 
easy watch. <laughs> just kind of like a sit back and enjoy the, the kind of jokes that we've got going on here. There's so many in such a rapid pace, and they're all parodies of things as well. <clears throat> I also made a notice here. Uh, Ichigo is now in the OP. Because at the end of the OP, he's reading Jump, and in the Jump is uh, Ichigo's face. So that well, means also now... in the OP, he just straight up does Bankai. <clears throat> yeah, he does Bankai too. <laughs> <laughs> he just does the uh, Bankai. Yeah, which is funny enough, not the 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 first Bankai of this episode too, because of Dragon Ball Please Peach. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, to go through these Kagura's Once Upon a Time in China Girl, the parody one. There's a, the the joke at the beginning where she says one bullet changed everything, and it shows her lover being shot by a gun. And then her she picks up her life later, and then she finds someone else to love, and then she says one noodle bowl changes their entire life. And then <laughs> yeah, and then it cuts from like that to bombs being dropped. Yeah, and it's like Gitogi <laughs> arguing about the doodles; they're not the right. And then it goes into like World War Two starting. <laughs> <laughs> and then it turns into like space Gundam near the end as it continues on she goes like ah yes hear the story of what one Chinese girl goes through goes through <laughs> um, and I also think at the end they uh, reference the fact that like they're saying that it was um, like directed by a Miyazaki like the, the last name of the director was Miyazaki, which is a reference to Hayao Miyazaki, the um, uh, Mukusaku, who is the screenwriter for Battle Royale, <laughs> Fukusaku, like all these people who are related to these very famous um, uh, j uh, Japanese films, and also they have stuff from like P Pedoro in there as well. So I thought it was a pretty funny parody of it. Especially when the Gundam thing happened. She's just like, this is the story of how one Chinese girl gets gets put through all this stuff in one go. <laughs> um, for the Atose and Catherine one, Tamakure, uh, Silver Soul. Um, which is a parody of Magical Girl shows. Um, <clears throat> I thought it was really Yeah, funny. don't they call themselves Magical Mature Women? Yeah, Magical Mature Women. <laughs> <laughs> which is a great name and then the funny part is that they do also the classic bit of a lot of what a lot of anime do which is anime girl running because she's late for school usually eating toast is usually the bit in most animes they they make fun of that there and then they both run into each other but also there's a part that i ended up laughing just because i was like it's so funny they have like multiple magical girl transformations in the span of like one fight <laughs> Cause they yeah, they keep doing it. They keep trying. They, uh, their battle cry at one point is so fucking funny because it's like, "We'll rescue anything dried up and old." <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> they also fight with nuts, kiss, chocolates, and permission seeds. Mm -hmm. Persimmon seeds, yeah. Which is really good. I also really like to say in the. <laughs> the 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 high school the high school girl outfit which is just really funny for some reason seeing this old lady in a in like con in the the basic magical girl outfits was really funny to me <laughs> as a fan of uh usual magical girl things and also in general transformation sequences they're always really funny to me <laughs> also when they keep I like doing how the when they bump into each other um and they start to turn around, and they have, like, anime girl faces. And then they finish turning around, and it turns into their, like, old person faces. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is great. <clears throat> Fantastic bit here. Tama Cure. Also, for some reason, them using the actual translation for Gintama and calling it Silver Soul. They're the only ones that do that, which makes me feel like they're just trying to get away from Gintama. <laughs> which is why they changed the, the, the name to the direct translation, which is Silver Soul. <laughs> The Katsura trailer, which is also, there's another funny bit with Katsura too, because the reason that the Shishingumi show up is because of Katsura, because they hear he's in the general area. And then later, uh -huh. Katsura shows up, and he's in his Captain Katsura outfit. And Hichikata says, who are you? He's like, I'm Captain Katsura. And he's like, oh, okay. Returning to that joke <laughs> where you mentioned where Katsura will constantly tell the Shishingumi who he is, and they will never uh -huh. know who he is. <laughs> Because I picked that up again, where he's like, he's literally telling them who he is. <laughs> so 
fucking funny. <laughs> but when he shows up, he draws it. He shows up all casual in the outfit. It just says, "I think my idea was the best." And Hijikata's like, "Who are you?" <laughs> he had no idea that he was here talking at all. When he, the reason that he was in there because he heard that Katsura was in there. But his trailer was pretty good. Um, it starts as like a fight, um, a kind of fight movie, and then it turns into like the Rose of Versailles, the black, the back rib of the back rib Rose of Versailles, I think is what it's called. And they're in their um, their woman outfits from a couple episodes ago when they were yeah, from when they were the at like the cross dressing bar, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're joined in with all their cross dresses as well as they're singing as well, which is kind of nice to see them again, actually. So that was pretty good. And then he says, like, this was my specific dream. That's how he de debuted the movie. He's like, this is my dream. And then at the end, they're like, what the hell is your dream? Yeah, they're like, what is that? <laughs> we have no idea what that means. <laughs> um, Sachans is a pretty obvious parody of the Sadako, except for with masochism and sadism put into it instead. And then hers is like extremely violent too, because it's like all the characters. Yeah, hers basically is like dead. all the characters being murdered. Yeah, just like horribly, horribly <laughs> murdered. And, and then she's also like torturing Kentucky in the background by like hitting him with the back of the. Yeah, she's like whipping him. Yeah, and then when uh, Kentucky starts crying at her, saying like, "We were talking about the beginning about losing our damn prime time plot, and you show up with this." We'll lose everything. Yeah, and then she's like, like, oh, actually, I like getting yelled at more. <laughs> <laughs> which is nice. Ote's trailer, which I think is maybe the... I don't know. The, it's the funniest one to me because it has so many dumb parodies of it, of them trying to say, like, oh, yes, my idea is just take all existing ideas and put them into one thing. <laughs> yeah, and I like in Ote's, um, every single time <laughs> she is, like, doing a move because she does like bankai first and then she does um gum gum punch the... gum gum yeah whatever and then uh the kamehameha it's always kondo in a different villain outfit <laughs> which is funny because in the the first one he does which is a it's a one piece villain that's attacking her it's not kondo but then the next time when it shows up he shows up not as a villain he shows up as a um as a spirit reaper right He's dressed up as yeah. He shows up as a he shows up as a spirit reaper with Ichigo's sword, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, it it cuts to her with the sword, just yelling Bankai and hitting him with the sword. Yeah, which was great. And then when he does the One Piece, I think he shows up as Crocodile. <laughs> And uh, when he shows up as Crocodile, and then when he shows up as she does the Luffy, she does the Gumu Gumu punch, and she does like a full on stretchy arm <laughs> to get mm -hmm. it done. Like and a full him. stretchy arm punch, yeah. Yeah. And then when he, <laughs> by the time he shows up as Cell for Dragon Ball, which is really funny when you remember all the shit around uh, Dragon Ball Superhero about how everyone says nobody likes to draw Cell because Cell's very annoying to animate because of all his design patterns. Because of all the and little stuff. dots and stuff, yeah. yeah. So it was really funny to see Kondo dressed up as him, and then by the time this point, at this point already, he knows that he's getting beat up. So you can see in his eyes, he's he's very sad <laughs> as he shows up and goes, ah, and then <laughs> she does the Kamehameha and blasts him away. And then her reveal of the um, the parody as well, because the name is just in so insanely long, and then also the logo is like all their logos put together as one. Yeah, it's like, literally just all the logos stuck together. Yeah, dragon, dragon, bleep piece, and also the the fact that it's called Gintama the movie. <laughs> I think everyone else had been doing series, and for her, she's like, no, this is a um, t a TV show. Also, like the, everyone's dressed up differently. I think uh, Katsura is a wizard. Um, Elizabeth is some. Yeah, kind of they're super. in like different like stereotypical okay. anime outfits yes they I think they said seven warriors i think um pretty good and then uh hasagawa's i just like hasagawa's because his was the most artsy of them all um even the site isn't 100 percent sure what this is a parody of they think it's a parody of the movie sideways which i was like uh yeah maybe i don't know 
but I like him kind of living his bum life with the bum Kentucky, and they're just kind of having the best. At one point, they start fighting each other in the rain. <laughs> yes, which was so fucking funny. It was when so they funny. just start beating the shit out of each other in the rain. I was dying. <laughs> It really is super funny because it, it comes out of nowhere based off of the scenes that you were seeing beforehand. And then they're having like this super like dramatic borderline when Naruto fought Sasuke at the Valley at the End <laughs> style fight of just hitting each other in the face. I thought it was great. Yeah, and they're just fucking, oh my god, they're just hitting each other the whole time. It kills me. <laughs> it fucking kills me. It's so good. It's very well done. Um... <clears throat> Hitchikata's is maybe the most simple because it's just him talking about, like, I just want to have a cooking show. But there was something kind of funny about him just wanting to have a very, like, ah, oh, yes, what's the perfect thing about Kintamo? Just me having a cooking show. Yeah, just if I could have a cooking show would be great. Be great. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> uh, Kondo's is a parody of Roman Holiday where uh, Ote is, like, some kind of prince. She's called Princess Anne, which is a reference to Audrey Hepburn, and he's Joe Bradley from that movie. I think they explained it in the the trailer for it and stuff like that. Uh, at one point they try and go into the mouth of truth but Sadaharu is it and he bites into his arm. It's a very specific parody of a very specific movie which I thought was funny. <clears throat> and then also the Romeo and Juliet thing. It's also funny that Kondo sees himself as Juliet. <laughs> and he sees Ote as uh, his, his Romeo. <laughs> And she also immediately beats him because maybe she doesn't appreciate the fact that she's seen as Romeo in this situation. Yeah, doesn't she say that, like, it's an insult to both her and Shakespeare? Yeah. And so he has to die. He has to die for this. Um, and yeah, also Prince Hadas was funny where it's like a Tarzan parody where he talks about, like... Also, the Prince Hadas shows up in this out of fucking nowhere. He just kind of shows up. He's like, ah, yes, hello. Let me give you my idea now. Yeah, but I also like when he shows up in Kagura's dream. Yeah, he's the he's guy who's the does... one that shoots Shimpachi. <laughs> for like one frame, he just shoots Shimpachi in the face. Perfect. <laughs> and yeah, was... his is Tarzan. And he's like, it's a so it's a story of friendship. And it's like, oh no, the hunters captured all the animals, and he just runs away to space. <laughs> Leaves them behind and instead of helping yeah. them. And then it starts playing the, the Darth Vader song. Dun, it starts playing the Imperial bum, March. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, and he has like a whole bunch of pictures uh. of he's like in Luke's hometown. He's hanging out with like a Jabba parody, and he goes to hang out with a, basically a Yoda parody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, oh, yes, this inspiring story about how a boy uh, loses everything and makes a vow to meet other aliens in space. <laughs> That's basically what yeah, he's like. Yeah, he's like, uh, <laughs> space is now his frontier to make new friends. <laughs> <laughs> Not to save his old friends, but to make some new ones. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh... Also, the new opening is good. Yes, the new opening is very good. Also, the same thing goes for uh, the new ED, which the new ED also shows a little bit of more of Gintoki's past, which makes me feel like we're f maybe going to get something in this before this ED is over. Because they, they were showing like characters that we have not met yet, and they were related yes, to... there was a lot of... They, they showed the dude from his past that, like, the, the crazy one, not Katsura, yeah. but the other one. D D Shinsuke, I think. Dio, yes. yeah, it was yeah. the Dio guy. Uh, they showed him, so I assume that we're gonna. And then, like at the end of the ending, those two fight, or, or they like yeah. they're starting to fight. It looks yeah, like. they have so. a full like end fight thing, so that made me feel like, oh, okay, yeah. maybe that's what this season. There might be maybe some good. shit going on here soon. Yeah. yeah, looking forward to that if we when we get to that. Um, but yeah, overall, it was a uh, pretty good episode to kind of start off the new uh, year season off, basically. Also, sorry if there's a noise in the background. My brother is currently sleeping. And he also is suffering from the sickness. <laughs> I don't sickness. hear anything. That makes you feel better. All right. We'll see if it gets picked up there. But if you hear it, uh, my brother also sick. So forgive me for that. I'm not going <laughs> to force him to wake up and go like, hey, wait until I'm done recording, please. <laughs> it's not how that works. But anyway, 
yeah, pretty good, pretty good episode. Good thing to start off of, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen in this uh, this new year of Gintama. How you feel? It was good. I liked it. It was uh, kind of nothing. It was like it was one of those episodes where it was like shit's happening, but I didn't dislike that just like random shit was happening. It was good stuff. No. Yeah, it's kind of. It was very much a. As someone who is sick, it was very much like a. Oh my god, I don't have like you hear. I'm legitimately here on my notes for this episode. Nice parodies. Ichigo is now in the OP. New <laughs> D, there's a new ED in OP. Those are all the notes I really needed to take because for the most part, I was just kind of enjoying my shit. Like there wasn't much to think about other than is look at this silly stuff on the screen, which I think was fantastic for specific days like this, where sometimes you just don't want to think that much. Sometimes you're just going to want to enjoy some shit. And I was like, yes, I'm not feeling the greatest. This looks fun. <laughs> Great. <laughs> let's, let's go. Thank you. Once again, being saved. <laughs> so good times. Uh, so yeah, those are the five episodes that we went through. And that's the end of year one of Gintama. Again, like we said at the be- uh, in the halfway point, when we not at the halfway point at the end of episode 49. Surprised that we made it here. And we thank you very much for uh, joining us with us for the entire time of it. Um, if you want to help yeah, us. Absolutely. If you want to help us in any way, the best way to do that, as always, is to leave a like and subscribe to me and do stuff like that, which you guys already do, which is why we don't really remind you guys to do it all the time, because you guys genuinely enjoy the stuff. <laughs> so we thank you very much for joining us with us. Yeah, it's- absolutely. Katama, good stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I'm glad that the first thing that we did for this was quality. Yeah. would have sucked if we did this and we're like, wow, this is awful. I hate it. Yeah, it's a good thing I did not pick the anime with the constant dying dogs, because that would have been very <laughs> rough to talk about. Uh, JoJo's great, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, the other one, the one that I said at the end of it, I think this has more dog death than JoJo. Yeah, you mean the one where the main characters are actually dogs? Yeah, featuring one yeah. of the greatest openings in the anime history. I'm, I'm I'm willing to say that that's maybe the I showed my friends that OP out of nowhere, which is a bunch of dogs running at bears to fight them, and they're like, "This is amazing! What is this anime about?" And I'm like, "Okay, uh, these bunch of dogs um, have to form together because a demon bear has been populating the bear population with his kin with himself." And it's going to take over humanity. So all the dogs of the world are joining forces to fight basically an army of bears. <laughs> they go, oh, you're lying. <laughs> and I said, uh, watch it. And then they go, there's no good way to watch it. And I said, damn it. <laughs> Got it again. Damn them. Damn you, Shonen Jump, for not releasing your shit worldwide. <laughs> so look forward to that because that anime is definitely on the list to talk about eventually. <laughs> I'll make sure to put up a warning of, hey, maybe if you're sensitive to dog violence, don't watch this series. <laughs> but we're gonna yeah, talk that's about probably it. a good idea. But that'll be a fun to talk about. But for now, I'm glad that we started with Gintama. It's been actually a very, very fun series to talk about, and I look forward to continuing on. And I should mention that um, some of some stuff that uh, some people have mentioned in the comments beforehand... Like looking back at some of the um, that uh, I'm going to look into this a little bit for maybe a side video thing where some of the author's notes from the manga related to the series would be kind of fun to look at. And thankfully, there is a site for that someone linked me the Gintama stuff where it basically categorized all the author's notes that he's ever made about the manga, the characters in general and the anime as well. So I'm going to see if I can look at for specific stuff that doesn't spoil where we're at currently so we can maybe take a look at that stuff and talk about it, which I thought would be a fun video, you know, kind of yeah, talk a little cool. bit more about it. Uh, someone brought it up, so I was like, oh, that sounds like a fun thing to do, actually, so we'll look into doing that. And I swear to God, for the other series, we will get back to GX. It's not my fault I got sick. <laughs> it's the science's <laughs> fault. <laughs> uh, but we'll get yeah, back. Yeah, that's into fair. That. Yeah. <clears throat> We will get into GX. I have not forgotten. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> but we will continue on forward next uh, episode with episodes 51, 52, 53, 54, and 55. Uh, thanks again very much for watching. Uh, we thank you very much, and we will see you guys in the next episode. So say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Let the music play.